I think it's almost universal that people worry about cancer. They worry about it because they know that their friends have developed it, that relatives have developed it, that they've heard someone that they know who's developed cancer. I think it's inevitable that people are concerned about it. We know that some of the common cancers have an inherited component. Breast cancer and bowel cancer, for example, sometimes occur in families in which many of the people in the family develop the cancer. This is because there are some genes that are responsible for causing breast and bowel cancer. It's important to be clear that not all cases of breast cancer are due to faulty inherited genes. Most breast cancer, in fact, is not genetic. It is not caused by inherited genes, but a small proportion is. And that is exactly the same with bowel cancer and with ovarian cancer. Other common cancers, for example lung cancer, do not have a genetic component as far as we know at the moment. In those families in which a fault gene has been found which can cause cancer, at present it is not possible to replace that fault gene. But the information may be useful because it may give people extra information as a warning sign that they may develop cancer at some stage later on in their lives. And most people decide to have extra screening or to be involved in extra screening programs if they're at increased risk of developing cancer. It's important to note that these screening programs do not prevent the cancer happening, but what they do do is identify the cancer early and we believe that that means it is more easily treated. So the concept of early detection of cancer causing better treatment is now well established. The goal of reducing the risk of developing cancer has always been one that researchers have aimed at for years. At the moment there are very few things that we know about which reduce cancer risk apart from stopping smoking. There are very few things which reduce for example the risk of breast cancer. Now there are very active research studies going on looking at various ways of reducing risk but at present there is nothing that has been properly validated in a major research trial which could be used at the moment to reduce cancer risk. There has been a tremendous amount of publicity about genetic cancer. Many people are aware that there are genetic links to cancer and as one would expect this can cause great anxiety. The anxiety often is caused because people are not properly informed as to whether it is likely that there is a genetic cancer in their family or not. Many people are unnecessarily anxious because they are worried that they may have genetic breast cancer in the family. And the vast majority of these people, in fact, do not have genetic breast cancer. So one of the things that we are trying to do with Cancer Backup is to properly inform people as to whether it is likely that the cancer in their family is genetic or not but the vast majority of cancers are not due to inherited faulty genes. We're working very closely with the insurance companies looking at the issues surrounding insurance for mortgages and for travel insurance in patients who have cancer or who have cancer in the family. At the moment there's a moratorium whereby the insurance companies and the Department of Health have agreed voluntarily to not charge people extra premiums because of the genetic link to cancer in the family. That is a somewhat unsatisfactory position. That moratorium will end in 2011 and we're working fairly hard with the insurance companies and with the Department of Health to try and get a more satisfactory outcome whereby people will hopefully not 
be inappropriately penalised because of their family history of cancer. It's important when you're filling in medical insurance forms to answer the question they ask you. And if the form asks whether you have cancer in the family, obviously you have to give a truthful answer. As far as we in Cancer Backup are aware, at present these sort of questions are not asked in employment interviews. And I think it would be very difficult for employers to actually understand the information received should they start asking such questions. We would of course be very interested to know if employers are starting asking these type of questions and I think if that were the case that Cancer Backup would certainly put in place some work to try and clarify the position. Once we've identified a faulty gene in a family we can then test individuals in the family for that faulty gene. Once we've identified the faulty gene and can offer testing, it is clear that the gene, the faulty gene, does not skip generations. However, people can carry the faulty gene and not develop the cancer, and therefore it appears to the observer as if the cancer has skipped generations. The faulty gene does not skip, but the apparent cancer does skip. And we see this particularly in families in which breast cancer is common and a male or a man carries the faulty gene. He often does not develop any disease, but then when his daughter gets older, she develops breast cancer. Now, the breast cancer appears to have skipped a generation, but of course the faulty gene has come through the man and therefore has not skipped a generation.